One form of differentiated assessment is that of informal or ongoing assessment. With ongoing assessment, teachers use a variety of assessment tools and activities to gather information before, during, and after learning. This information is analyzed, and the results are used to improve instruction and provide feedback to students. For an example of ongoing assessment, we visited Callanan Middle School in Des Moines, Iowa. Before visiting classrooms, we asked Principal Douglas Calloway to comment on the value of differentiated assessment. I would say it's very valuable. Um, you need to assess what the student's knowledge base is. You know, at the end of the lesson, at the beginning of a lesson, to figure out, okay, this is what the kids know now, this is what they know when they leave the classroom. I think if you don't have ongoing assessments, you can assume that the kids learned it. You can assume that your students are gathering information, but you don't really know that. I think by ongoing assessments, you can evaluate how well the lesson went, are the things you need to tweak, things you need to, to revisit again, but you're doing a better job of ensuring that your students actually are learning the material you want them to learn. The ongoing assessment is very, very valuable. One type of ongoing assessment is performance assessment, which measures students' ability to apply knowledge to complete a task. Performance assessment occurs naturally in science classrooms, where students are asked to apply and test their understanding through experiments. This type of assessment also involves the teacher monitoring students throughout their performance in order to give them feedback about how they are doing. For an example of ongoing assessment, we visited the classroom of teacher Nancy Johnson. As you will see, Mrs. Johnson uses a variety of assessment strategies to help her very diverse group of middle school students. The lesson that we're doing today is actually <clears throat> an ongoing lesson that we have been working on for the last three days, where we actually were studying microbiology and we took bacterial samples from a number of different places in our homes and in our school and from ourselves and we've been growing those bacterial samples. We've been looking at them under the microscopes and today our job is to kill those bacterial samples with a number of antibiotics, antibacterial products and, um, and the, the students will be learning about how those work at the same time that they're doing the lab work. Um, we have a real diverse group of students. Um, I have students who have very, very high abilities. Um, I have students that have pretty low abilities. I have a number of English language learners. Um, uh, the class that you'll be videotaping in here, uh, I also have a number of kids with behavior disorders as well. They'll, there will be uh, an opening question where the kids will actually need to think about the things I want them to think about as the class is going and as the lab is going. So our opening question has them think about uh, antibiotics, antibacterial, uh, antimicrobial, and they have to answer a question that helps them start to think about those words, because they're big words and words they don't use every day, uh, those words in the classroom then we will start um, an assessment that is called a KWL, which is what I already know, what I want to know, and what I learned. And clearly the kids aren't going to be able to finish the whole KWL today. They'll be able to fill in parts of it, and we won't actually finish that assessment until Friday of this week. Uh, at the end of the class period, I also am going to ask a very thought-provoking question that will deal with the class that I'm teaching tomorrow uh, to see how uh, <clears throat> whether or not the kids are understanding some of the things already that we'll start talking about tomorrow as far as antibiotics and antibiotic resist or bacterial resistance to antibiotics and so they'll also have a closing question today as well uh, and along with assessment we'll be able to see if they did a good job choosing products to kill their bacteria by tomorrow because the bacteria will be dead by tomorrow if they've done a good job. Even if you're not certain about the answer to this question, on your note card, I want everybody to answer this question. I'll be collecting it in just a moment. The question is, do you think there is a difference between antibiotic, antibacterial, or antimicrobial products? And if you do think there's a difference, what do you think that difference is? Please answer that question on your card. Put your first and last name on your card. I'm going to collect them in about three minutes. While you guys are writing the answers to your questions on here, I'm going to pa be passing out information on our upcoming field trip. 
Am I? You, you told us what antibiotics were. What did you say again? What does the prefix anti mean? What do you think? Anti. Anybody want to help her out? Anti means against. So if antibiotics, right, anti-life, good. I'm going to come and collect these in about one minute. If you're not done with yours, it is your job to get it into my inbox today. Okay. If you're not done when I come collect them, it's your job to get it into the inbox today. I'm going to come around and pick those up. Thanks. You done? Thank you. <clears throat> the question that I've asked you today to start the class has some words in the question that I want you to actually be thinking about today. They're words that are going to come up throughout the whole lesson today. Next, we need to talk about what we're doing today. And remember, today our whole job is to do what? Kill the bacteria. Kill the bacteria. That's right. We've been growing bacteria for a couple of days, and today's the day we're going to kill it. Now, I've chosen some common household products up here. I've chosen them on purpose, and I'm going to talk about them. You're going to often hear these words while I go through them. Antibiotic, antibacterial, and antimicrobial. First of all, we actually, thanks to Jillian Brown's dad being sick and not taking his medicine like he's supposed to, um, we actually had a couple of pills of amoxicillin that I broke apart and put with distilled water and stirred them up. You can use the amoxicillin, which is an antibiotic, and so if you took bacterial samples from your throat or your nose, um, this would be what you'd want to try to kill it with because this is like inside bacteria inside the human. And the way that you'll do this with a straw like this is you just put your, it down into the liquid, finger over the straw, over the top of your Petri dish, let it drop in. Okay? Now, here's some of the other products besides the uh, amoxicillin, which I was kind of happy to get because I didn't think I could get any. Okay, I have two kitchen cleaners. Both of them say antibacterial on them. They say kills household germs. It doesn't say how many household germs. Maybe it just kills two. I don't know. But it says it kills household germs. This one is an antibacterial kitchen cleaner. It's an all-purpose cleaner. And it doesn't even say it kills germs. But we've got to assume that since it's antibacterial, it's got to kill something some kind of bacteria. Now, I chose these two products because this one does not have citrus in it. This one does have citrus in it, okay? Anything with citrus, an orange, a tomato, a lemon, a lime, any of those things would contain citric acid, okay? Citric acid doesn't kill bacteria necessarily, but it does prevent it from growing. So I wanted to see if it made a difference on whether or not it had citric acid in it when we actually test it. Okay, the two mouthwashes I have are both just Target brand, ma brand mouthwashes, and I bought them because they're cheaper than Listerine. Um, and then they're basically made of the same thing. They both say antiseptic mouth rinse. They both say the exact same thing about killing germs that cause bad breath, removes plaque that leads to gingivitis. Um, it's, they're both approved by the America, American Dental Association, but one's minty and one's medicine. So we have to actually see if the medicine works better than the mint or if it doesn't really matter. I'm partial to this, although I don't know why. It doesn't really taste very good, but that's what I use. Okay, this Febreze antimicrobial, it's a fabric refresher, says it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria that cause odors. I chose this even though this isn't a product I use at home because I have a nephew who just got out of college and he's poor and he told me that uh, he could not afford to do his laundry all the time because it costs so much money when he goes to the laundromat. So he had a, la a clothesline in his bedroom that he'd just hang up his clothes and he would spray them with Febreze. We'll see if that worked for him. Okay, these two dishwashing detergents, one of them Joy does not say antimicrobial, antibiotic, antimicro. It didn't say anything like that on it. And this palm olive actually says antibacterial on it. 
Now they both have a citrus in them. This one has a lemon, this one has an orange. But I wonder if there's a difference between an antibacterial and one that doesn't say anything about antibacterial. I do have kind of a funny story about this one. Remember earlier in the year, and I bought this just to keep here, um, to wash dishes and stuff from our labs. But remember earlier in the year when we did those pond critter samples? Yeah. We looked at the pond critters. Well, last year I took my orange juice containers and I washed them all ahead of time and I dried them, you know, set them out and everything. And I went down to the pond early that morning and took pond samples before I brought them to school that day. And first block, it was awesome. We had tons of pond critters. They're swimming like crazy. They were fun to watch. They were awesome. By second block, they were moving a little slower. Didn't quite, quite see as many moving as we had before. And by fifth block, they were all dead. Why? Andy? I must have still had soap on it, that's right. And this is antibacterial soap. So I actually killed the pond critters myself by accident. Uncool, but I did it. This I just saw and I didn't know this existed. And I don't know, it's a little bit scary to me, but also kind of cool. This Clorox Anywhere hard surface makes it sound like you can spray this on absolutely anything. I read the back of this thing and it says it's gentle enough to use around kids, pets, and food. But then it lists stuff on here you can spray it on like babies binkies, like their pacifiers. You can spray this like right on like your uh, cutting boards that you're working with or knives that you're cutting with. You can spray it right on your food. You can spray it on anything and it says that it's safe. Now, I don't know that I would trust that just because, but mostly because it says Clorox on it, and I usually think bleach, and that's poisonous. It does say it kills 99.9% or 99 .9 of the bacteria. But I'm also looking on the back of this and it says it kills salmonella, which causes food poisoning. It kills Staphylococcus aureus, which gives you a staph infection like the whole football team at Roosevelt got. It says, so I could have sprayed this on uh, my kids' football pads. Saved him from the staph infection. It says it kills strep throat, pneumonia, E. coli. So I don't know. Maybe that's pretty good. I've never tested it. This is the stuff that I spray on stuff that I'm not actually cleaning. Like my keyboard. Like my kids' remote controls for their uh, PlayStation stuff. Uh, like the remote for the TV. You can spray this on things. If I'm too lazy to clean the bathroom more than once, and I have a lot of boys in my house, I just spray down the whole place. <laughs> okay? So this, you'll see if that is actually worth anything. Now, I'll be sad if this doesn't work, <laughs> by the way. Uh, this is bleach, and it's super harsh. We know it's going to kill a lot of stuff, but this can also kill humans. So we wouldn't necessarily want a lot of this any place where we would be ingesting it. <clears throat> Soaps, hand soaps. One says antibacterial, the other just says lavender and chamomile. Okay? Is there a difference? Maybe it doesn't make any difference and they both do a good job. I know I would choose this one over this one just from the smell of it, but I don't know. Okay, now all of these samples are in bottles with droppers. When you go to do your bacteria killing today, First of all, in your Petri dish, you have it divided, remember, into four quadrants. Now, when you open up your Petri dish, you're going to be choosing four different samples, but they should make sense. You're not going to use Clorox bleach to be able to clean off your keyboard. You want to use something that would be appropriate for cleaning off your keyboard. So you'll pick one thing. You'll put one drop right in the center of your quadrant to be able to kill it. Now, even though I said one drop in every class, of course somebody in second block took the whole squirter, squirted a whole thing of Clorox bleach in there, put the lid back on, and what do you suppose is going to happen then? It'll leak to every part, and all he's testing is just Clorox bleach instead of four things. So I want you to use four different products in your four different quadrants, and you're going to be doing that testing today. Now, before you can do testing today, though, I have something for you to fill out. I know you guys have done these before. I do a thing. KWL. KWL stands for? No. 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 Want to know and learn. Now, on this KWL, I actually have sentence starters on here for you. 
so that you can get an idea of how to get started, but it should not stop you. If you finish the sentence starters and you want to, or you already know something else about antibiotics or antibacterial products, you are welcome to add that on here past the sentence starters. Under want to know, if there's something else you want to know that's not part of the sentence starters, please include it. Under the learn, the L, we are not going to get to that part until Friday of this week. You may start as soon as you get it. I'll pass out your bacteria while you're working on this and your gloves. Once you're done doing your KWL, then you can just go ahead and pick out products that you want. Please work at your own tables with one product at a time. Or you can just choose to wash your hands really good when you're done. Yeah, I don't want to touch that either. That one? Well, those are your only choices, kiddo. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you're right. So bacteria are really cute, girl. That's her lampshade. <laughs> Why is it red? It's polka dot. It's pink. I want to keep some telling it red. What's the yellow dot over there? No. Oh, oh, oh my god. Not for that. Uh-uh. Oh, is that the freak? No, it is. It needs Clorox. This is for all purpose, okay? Oh, four or nine. Okay, well, for the skin, this is for, like the mantle and behind the picture, we use like Lysol or Clorox. Right. It's one of the Oh, so you put the same one in those, and he put another one in there? Oh, two different ones in there? Okay, well, make note of it so tomorrow you know that. Um, both formal and informal assessment is part of everything I do every single day. So for example, when we actually did our bacterial swabbing on our petri dishes, um, by the day after they did it, I could look at their petri dish and be able to tell them whether or not they followed directions because I can look directly at what they've done and I can say, hey, that looks good, carry on, or I can say, uh, it doesn't look like this worked out very well. Let's try to figure out what we did wrong here, um, <clears throat> which I know that all teachers do informal assessment all the time. Uh, probably one of the biggest difference between teaching a differentiated classroom, though, and assessing informally and formally uh, is it really guides my class how the kids respond to the assessments that they're doing. So the assessment isn't just to test them so I have a grade in the grade book. It's often uh, used for me to be able to figure out what we're going to do the next day uh, in the class based on how they were able to answer the questions that they had for assessment. Our kids know because of our school and because of our teachers in our school that we all have different starting places and different ending places. Uh, they know that the expectation in the school is that they will grow regardless of where they started. So if they are in this school, they will have been better off than if they had not have been in Calinan Middle School. Um, <clears throat> so they also can recognize that different people have different strengths, different weaknesses, which I think is a very important uh, skill for the kids to have, not only for personal goal setting, but also so that they can get along in society where people aren't all the same. Okay, as far as what we're going to be doing with our bacterial samples tomorrow. Tomorrow is the real test to see whether or not we kill them. And when we look at them tomorrow, you will be able to tell. Because weirdly enough, it won't look the same. If you had really cloudy bacteria, it's going to look clear. If you had like yellow bacteria, it might look white or cloud or uh, clear. But it's going to look different tomorrow than it did today if you kill it. For those of you who are growing mold, that black, that black 
will change color. You won't be able to see it anymore. Just like in the shower, you know, when you spray Tylex in there and then the black goes away in there and you wonder where did it all go? Well, the same thing's gonna happen. And is it actually gone, gone? No. No, it can't. It can't just disappear, can it? So what's actually happening to that bacteria? It's dying. And the colors in that bacteria have those colors because of something that is going on inside of them while they're living. So all of that will change tomorrow. Unless, of course, you don't kill your bacteria. <coughs> was it somebody in this class that was telling me about their mom, the nurse, in nursing school? Or was that fifth hour? OK. Uh, I have a student whose mom is in nursing school who actually happens to be doing the exact same uh, lab that we're doing, trying to kill bacteria, and they have been trying to kill mouth bacteria for a week and have not been able to find a toothpaste or a mouthwash yet that can kill it, even though it all says it does, okay, which is kind of interesting. Okay, um, tomorrow when we talk in class, we're actually going to be talking in terms of antibiotics and bacterial resistance. Now we've actually talked about this very briefly in <coughs> class and what have I told you about antibiotics and bacterial resistance? What did you learn? Who remembers? Touched on it very briefly. Showed up on your quiz where I asked about antibiotics and bacterial resistance. Amari? If you, if you don't finish taking your medicine, nothing. Well, if you don't finish taking it, then um, it'll come back and that medicine won't work anymore. Okay, good. What can happen to you, obviously, is let's say I start taking medicine like Jillian Brown's dad started taking amoxicillin, clearly for some type of bacterial infection. And then what did he do as soon as he started feeling better, Andy? He stopped taking it. That's why he had leftovers for us to have. And I'm glad for that today because I wanted them, but I'm not normally glad for that. That's because what did Jillian Brown's dad actually do to his immune system? Danielle? He made it immune to that, uh, that kind of medicine. It, he actually made himself immune to using amoxicillin because what's happened is he killed off some of the bacteria in his body, but what bacteria survived? That's right, the strong ones. The strong bacteria survived. Now, the strong bacteria surviving in his body, they already outlived probably four days of amoxicillin. If he starts taking amoxicillin again, is it going to work? No. no, because the strong bacteria are the ones that are now dividing and reproducing. Now here is just something I want you to think about. If bacteria can resist and get stronger because of antibiotics, do you think the same thing can happen when we use antibacterial cleaners in our homes? Okay. I see a lot of people nodding their heads and I heard a lot of yeps. Okay, if that's if. If the strongest survive and you use this again and it survived it the last time, is it going to survive it this time? A possibility. Now in our society right now, we have a tendency anytime we get sick to go run into the doctor and getting an antibiotic, don't we? What will happen if you don't get an antibiotic right away within your body? Andy. That's right. Your immune system will start to attack it. And normally, that's why they say, if you go on medicine and you have a cold, you'll get better in 7 to 10 days. And if you don't go on medicine and you have a cold, you get better in 7 to 10 days. That's normally true because our immune system will eventually take care of it. It's just oftentimes we are impatient. The other thing that happens is we're around each other all the time. And if I'm not on antibiotics, I can actually spread what I'm carrying, okay? Which is also true. But if I choose to go on an antibiotic, what is the 
very most important thing I can do for myself and everyone around me? Anna. Take all your antibiotics because your doctor is prescribing enough to kill off all the bacteria over that time frame. Now, we're not going to have time to move on anymore today. What I'm going to ask you to do, please, is make sure your KWL and your card go in your science folder. Get your science folder in your science binder. They need to be picked up. Ali, if you would go ahead and pick all of those up. Those of you who have not yet picked up the extra credit but want it, remember it's due on Friday. The extra credit is up there for you to pick up. I thought that the lesson went pretty well. The kids are excited about this kind of science and they'll be excited to see whether or not their bacteria died tomorrow. Um, I think they were doing a good job with their KWLs. They took them seriously. They did a good job filling them in. Uh, with some of my other classes, I don't give um, sentence starters with my KWLs, but this class is almost all kids with behavior problems, English language learning problems, um, or other learning disabilities, and so I give them sentence starters, otherwise they feel overwhelmed with a KWL, they feel like they don't know where to start with it, um, and my ESL kids don't have the vocabulary to write in complete sentences yet. <clears throat> with the KWLs, what they've done now is they wrote down what they knew, they wrote down what they wanted to know, and what a lot of them found out was they wanted to know what the words are in the no <laughs> section, um, and so that's what they filled out so far. Now within the next two days, they should be able to answer all of those questions and that will all be in the learned section. Plus they'll pick up things along the way as we talk about, um, listen to the BBC uh, broadcast that we're going to listen to tomorrow about the skin in eating bacteria um, and as they watch the video clips that I have on antibiotics, um, they'll learn a lot more than just what ended up on the K and the W. So they'll be able to put all kinds of things on the learned for me. Uh, and from that, that's a way for me to be able to assess them individually. I, I also have to remember though, with my ESL students, uh, written language is always a problem as far as assessment. And so with those kids, I usually will sit down with them and ask them individual questions with their uh, KWL as well, because a lot of times they can verbalize things that they can't write down.